Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back and I'm glad that you're finding my analysis of use. Thank you for your comments and, um, and kind words as well and hopefully let's uh, get you to a place where you can become consistent um, with your trading. So. Uh, as we do start off every week on the fundamentals and sentiment analysis in this week um, you know we have uh, the US GDP growth second quarter GDP growth um, flash market PMIs durable good orders and existing and new home sales um, I think the GDP is going to be the most important one UK CBI factory orders and distributive trade surveys and Eurozone, Japan, and Australia flash PMIs, um, producer and manufacturing index, which is basically inflation. But the main one is going to be the ECB uh, policy, and it's, um, trading economics is saying that the ECB is most likely to signal monetary easing soon, as uh, in September, while Turkey central bank is seen cutting rates, which is very interesting because um, we have the Fed. Um, which is looking to cut rates. Um, Fed watch tool. We have um, there's a hundred percent chance of an ease at the moment. Um, the financial institutions are factoring an ease of 0.25, 77.5 percent of them think there's going to be 0.25 percent cut. Um, and this is kind of reduced from earlier in the week where this uh, major cut, I'll say major cut, but a bigger cut, which is 0.5, was actually um, quite high. As well, I think it was like 50 50 at one point. Um, but I think the uh, the um, chances of a 0 0.5 0 0.25 cut is um, is now increasing. Um, but what's interesting is that all central banks now are trying to um, cheapen their currency. So you've got, for example, the ECB um, who are looking to cheapen their currency. Um, and this is to uh, for inflation and also you know to boost the economy go to Reuters, European Central Bank Mario Draghi plans to restart purchases of government bonds by November to support the fragile Eurozone economy, right? You also have the Bank of um, Japan, right? Who says, well, mull data over last minute in deciding July policy. So Bank of Japan, uh, Mr. Kuruda, Kuroda said on Thursday, the central bank will scrutinize economic developments until the last minute in deciding policy this month, suggesting whether to stand pat or increase stimulus will be a close call. So you've got the European Central Bank and you've got the Bank of Japan both um, looking to um, add stimulus uh, to uh, their, their already, you know, uh, monetary policy and you've got the Federal Reserve looking to cut rates. In my opinion, stimulus is a lot worse than um, cutting rates. So um, if you are planning your um, trades and how to basically capitalize off that is pretty much what I'm doing is looking for still buy trades on the dollar, regardless of what happens in the next uh, week or two. I think the focus will be on you know the Fed cutting rates, but after that, the focus is gonna shift to the Bank of Japan and especially the European Central Bank. So um, dollar is still a buy. They're in a much better position economically and um, from a fiscal perspective as well. Um, so uh, if you do want to learn about some fundamental analysis, I have a fundamental analysis course. It basically shows you the relationship between gross domestic product, inflation and interest rates and the interest rate cycle and much, much more. The link is in the description box below go to all the videos and scroll through right and uh, understand what it is that moves the market it's not a pin bar against a level of support or resistance or supply and demand in this case there are real reasons determining value so this is how you determine value between currencies um, so let's get on to now the technicals and we start off on the Dow Jones dollar index so Dow Jones dollar index from last week, uh, price did come up, uh, sorry, it come down into this zone. Um, and the Dow Jones dollar index is just a uh, measure, an index of the dollar strength versus the major currencies like the euro, the pound, and the yen. I think the Australian dollar as well. <coughs> so 
we use this as kind of like confluence, overall confluence and overall you know dollar strength when we're trading any of the uh, dollar crosses. So this week or last week, I should say, prices you know bounced off of um, that demand zone, came down into the deeper end, and then got a bit of uh, buying as well. So there were some definite buying opportunities on the dollar crosses this week. <clears throat> I'm sure some of you took advantage of that. We've come down into this demand zone here. Again, what we do is we just look for bullish price action on the Dow Jones dollar index and uh, look for that as confluence. So into this week, I think what's gonna happen, and I don't necessarily like predictions, I don't do predictions, I just uh, um, wait for prices to do what they do and then plan around there. So it's more of a, if prices come down here, then I'm going to uh, look for um, buying opportunities on the dollar. So, what I'm looking for in the lead up to, um, uh, uh, you know, it's the end of the month, July, which we have the FedWatch tool right here. So, countdown for 10 days. Um, I probably expect the dollar to become a bit weaker, maybe chop around a little bit. If not, come down back in, down into that zone and look to, you know, um, to strengthen or potentially come down into this zone. Right. Either way, I think the rate cut is going to have some probably short-term negative sentiment and weaken the dollar. But overall, I think the dollar is still the um, the, the buy out of uh, many of the currency pairs, especially the euro and the uh, the yen. <clears throat> um, so pretty much looking for that at the moment. Um, if you're looking for a uh, some sell trades on the dollar. That you've got you've got quite a wide um, supply zone. You've got lower highs, lower lows. So um, the chart is going to look a bit uh, bit messy. But what you've got in a in a situation like this, what you've got to do is when you get a supply zone, supply zones from lower highs and lower lows. What you wouldn't do is separate them by determining the supply and demand equation. So supply and demand equation, if you don't know, is uh, basically just looking for um, horizontal, diagonal, and dynamic support and resistance within these areas, right? Because that's where other traders are gonna be looking at as well, right? Either taking profit or entering new trades within those areas of supply and demand. And supply and demand really is value, right? Is understanding proof of value, right? This was obviously proven to be an expensive area for the dollar, hence prices went and created new lows. So if prices come back up to here and you want to be short, then you're looking at short trades within this whole area of, you know, supply. Not all supply zones are, you know, made the same. And this is how we separate, um, you know, larger areas of supply within this area. So there'll be another area right here where you'd be looking for. So value and we've got supply and demand equation. If you want to know a bit more, there's a video called uh, supply and demand order flow equation do a search for that and uh, I'll show you exactly how in this video how to apply horizontal dynamic and diagonal support and resistance to areas of demand and supply so <clears throat> this is what it looks like if you want to get short if you're looking for long trades what you're looking for is probably a bit of a pullback or any kind of bullish price action as we go into um, uh, the week um, and look for just that confluence when we are trading any of the dollar pairs now moving on to the dollar yen so dollar yen from last week what we had was a bit of a bounce right and prices have now come back down into so we had, this was where the original uh, area was to get uh, long we had a little bit of a bounce there and then prices have come down. And I think, again, this is where I wanna be a buyer, especially around this round number, one, um, 107.0 right here. Prices can come down this week and then I can get to be a buyer. This would be an absolute bargain as was proven in the past that this was a bargain <clears throat> because the dollar rallied from there. So going on to dollar yen. <clears throat> I've taken always taken away that that demand zone that was there anyway. So now it looks like um, 
what I'll be looking for is some buy trades at the moment. If prices can kind of retrace a little bit into this week and then look for buy trades to position myself. If you're looking to sell, then you've got supply zone there and you've got another supply zone right there. And again, you can apply the supply and demand equation right here where you've got support, resistance, bit of support there, support, support. So if you are looking to sell, this is where you'd be looking to get short. Yeah, right in this 108, the underside of that um, supply zone, if you're looking at. And you'd really be buying the Japanese yen based off of risk, <coughs> risk off sentiment. And it tends to be some risk off sentiment. We've already kind of bounced off it on the lower time frame. You can see that wick there. Um, um, and this is due to, if you go to somewhere like Bloomberg, we've got um, uh, Iran seizing British oil tanker um, in far Far's news tweet. And if you go to Reuters as well, I think the headlines are um, UK call seizure of ship, a hostile act. So risk off tends to... Uh, uh, strengthen the dollar yen so what you want to do is uh, just keep be mindful um, when buying dollar at the moment as there is uh, some risk off environment but I will be definitely uh, looking at buy trades around the, uh, the lows moving on to the uh, dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss uh, again the uh, Dollar did rally a little bit from here from last week. Nice little pin bar there. Um, definite, you know, two to one type trade, and then it's kind of sold off right here. So um, now what we're looking at is, I would say, I delete that, and you've got a few supply zones right here. And you've got a bit of demand zone down there. So I think what you're looking for is again, I put it pull back into this level. I like this as well. I'm gonna be a buyer of the dollar Swiss. So I'm just waiting for any kind of pullbacks into that area there. If you're looking at sell trades, you'll be looking at um, actually, in fact, track that down to here. That's where it's the underside of that supply zone as we've, as we've made lower highs, lower lows. So you've got probably around here and again if you're looking at understanding where other traders are looking to get in as well that area right there on the side of that would be a um, decent area to look for any short trades again risk off Swiss franc benefits so we could see prices start to drift lower especially into the um, the rate cut would be a buy the rumor sell the fact uh, type uh, situation but again, I'm still going to be long dollars um, overall. Uh, what have we got? Dollar CAD next. And again, we kind of just um, ended up going sideways last week. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, up and down, up and down. And um, so uh, again, I think the CAD um, last week had didn't have a great... Um, uh, data release at all. I think uh, if you go back to Forex Factory and you look at last week, I think CPI was was really poor for the CAD. Yeah, CPI was minus minus two. Even though it's green, it's uh, definitely not the greatest number in the world, um, inflation wise. And um, also there was I think the CAD had another. Um, data release. What am I looking for? CAD, yeah, core retail sales on the Friday, which again was minus zero point three. So not very, uh, not very good for the CAD. But the CAD may may rally temporarily and go shorter based off of um, oil concerns, oil supply concerns, and with the uh, you know the Iran British. Um, feud that's going on at the moment so you potentially could see some uh, strength coming into the CAD and, and then come down to this 1.30 uh, level 
the CAD is highly correlated to oil, um, but the CAD overall as a, as a country and their, and their economy isn't doing great at all. So again, on this pair, I'll be looking for potential buy trades, but just waiting for technical setups down into either that zone right there or down into this lower zone if we can get here. I think the CAD is, or oh, the dollar will be very um, undervalued, especially if it, the, the lower it goes. If you are looking at um, some buy trades for the CAD, you'd wait for price to really come back up into this supply zone, looking for that area there, or you'd be looking for another supply zone right here. If you're looking for short trades there. Next is the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and New Zealand dollar has been has been done um, very well uh, this week. And again, positive data coming out for the New Zealand dollar CPI coming out at zero point six as expected. So um, you know, uh, ticking over for the New Zealand dollar, and we've seen prices come up to this area of supply, kind of. You know hold there for a little bit and then come up to this now area of supply potentially so um with the new zealand dollar being actually quite strong i'll put it more neutral on this pair let's go to charts and update this slightly so if you are looking to buy the actually let's add in some more zones i'd probably say now this can stretch up to here and then you've got a bit of a zone right here higher ends can delete this what we've got is some demand right here again proof of value right where price is making higher highs higher lows There's definitely demand there so um, if you are looking at trading and buying the CAD sorry buying the New Zealand dollar then you'll be looking at a move down Move down like this before looking at buy trades. If you are looking to get short, um, I think pretty much now, I want to say probably around this round number as well, the 0 0.68 round number is um, will be very interesting to see what happens. But you've got two um, pretty decent um, currencies uh, competing against each other. So um, it's, this is probably more of a difficult read at the moment. Uh, when it comes to um, supply and demand. I think, again, New Zealand dollar should probably strengthen on dollar weakness, but the New Zealand dollar, the RBNZ, which is their central bank, Reserve Bank of New Zealand, will be also looking to cut rates as well, as uh, <clears throat> they're also concerned about global growth and they're going to be getting ahead of an expensive New Zealand dollar, which isn't great for their economy. So... Um, think once the uh, focus is off the Fed cut then this should want to turn around um, looking at the pound dollar and the pound dollar um, nice trade we got this week off of this supply zone right here right prices came in put in a nice uh, entry candle and then sold off nice two to one trade in the lower time frame um, and now we're getting, we're getting uh, prices come back up into this area here. Now, um, what you have to bear in mind is that this has now created a bit of a supply zone right here. But you've got one touch here. This is the second touch. Now, second touches are normally okay, but not as good as first touches of levels. So, um, <clears throat> again, in the... Uh, in the weeks leading up to in the next 10 days leading up to um, uh, the, the, the Fed rate cut potentially we could see prices drift a bit higher up into you know this zone right here um, also as well no deal has been taken off the table um, uh, Parliament voted um, what to stop uh, any future Prime Minister especially Boris Johnson from taking um, from actually enacting or proroguing Parliament um, basically taking uh, the, the no deal um, uh, or a no deal option off the table so that's what you know um, 
made the uh, British pound rally, um, the more that the British pound is going to be entering into some sort of deal, the more with the euro, especially with, you know around Brexit, um, the, the, the more positive you're going to get sentiment wise on the pound. So pound rallied a little bit and I'll probably expect prices to kind of, you know, rally, especially into the, uh, the rate cut. And then um, I'll be looking at some short trades potentially um, a bit higher up. Um, but if you want to get short, even now or into that area, if you want to get long, then I would say um, probably waiting for prices to really kind of pull back to this one to four level before looking at long trades like that, which is a decent long. Looking at the euro dollar, and the euro dollar last week. Again, came up to this area here, and then there was a nice shorting opportunity um, in this. I didn't get involved in that. <clears throat> the risk reward for me wasn't wasn't great, so um, didn't manage to get into this short. Prices came up and then came down. And I think prices will weaken off um, eventually, um, and this is due to the European Central Bank adding stimulus, uh, potentially adding stimulus in September. Um, so. If we go to the chart and update that, bit of a sideways movement. This demand zone, if you're looking to buy the euro, has been touched once, twice. And the more times the level is touched, the weaker it becomes. So um, maybe you might want to double think uh, about uh, basically buying at this zone here. You probably maybe want to look for buy trade there if you are looking to buy the euro. If you're looking to sell um, the euro and buy the dollar, You'd really be waiting for price to come and kind of come back up into this fresher area of supply before looking at um, you know sell trades, especially around that 1.13 round number. Um, I'm looking to be a buyer of the dollar up here. Um, if prices can get around here, if not, even better will be that area there. Looking at the euro yen last week we were in you know a bit of a range between the low and the high and again prices have drifted down on rumors of a uh, more stimulus QE 2.0 um, so we're down into this demand zone now the question you have to ask yourself is why is the euro a buy here why is it you know cheap and a bargain at this price um, uh, personally I, I can't really see it but also you also have the again the Japanese yen um, you know, and the Bank of Japan looking to add stimulus, so it's a bit of a difficult read at the moment. Um, uh, and if you go to the chart, potentially what we could see is prices kind of rally from here, as the Euro, as the sorry, the Bank of Japan will be the first to kind of announce their stimulus right in, at the end of July as well. So you could see prices on the euro rally, and basically come back up into this supply zone before um, reversing around here All right if not around here yeah also as well keep in mind that Japanese yen may strengthen based off of you know um, uh, oil tanker tensions um, between you know the uh, the US Britain and Iran so um, this is also a factor in the yen strengthening some risk off coming into the market. Uh, moving on to the Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar, um, I want to get short on this pair. What we had this week is a level come up, a shorting opportunity right here. And then we've got this large candle. And I think this is probably about to roll over soon. Um, yeah, so uh, the Australian dollar isn't isn't doing fantastic either. <clears throat> so at the moment, what we've got is a level, and uh, traders in the group, um, uh, in the my mentoring group, uh, trading one eighty, we uh, we're looking for a nice little setup here. It's what we call a stop hunt setup, where prices, you know, we're looking for a bit of price action right there, and then. 
prices to kind of fall away and there's a way to enter um, based off of stop hunting right here so looking at that area for a nice short trade if you are looking at long trades then that's going to be your demand zone right here looking at getting short right now isn't um, a bad idea either potentially um, uh, if you're looking at lower time frames looking at you know potential short trades but looking for some sort of um, uh, stop hunt uh, setup right here within this supply zone on a higher time frame um, which is going to be if you can see it then looking to get short on this um, by the way BlackRock who manage um, I think it's something like six trillion worth of uh, dollars, basically um, uh, fund hedge fund. Uh, I think the biggest um, fund in the world. Uh, they are also short on this currency pair, and they see overall targets at around sixty-five in the uh, in the uh, medium term. <clears throat> so with BlackRock also uh, looking to get short right on this currency pair this is going to be just the first opportunity if prices you know come up to here then this is even better not an, uh, an even better opportunity for us to look for some short trades on this currency pair as again an expensive uh dollar um and i'm talking about aussie dollar is actually problematic for the uh, the australian central bank um they cut rates i think it was here or was it down here? I think it was on the 9th of July that cut rates. Now you're seeing prices all the way up here. Their intention was for the Australian dollar to actually get weaker, right? So <clears throat> short sort of way for me, but if you are looking at, you know, longs and trend continuation, then this is gonna be the first area to look for long trades here. And then you can look for some probably some more long trades right there. You've got a bit of uh, a level right there as well. So you can look for some your long trades within those demand zones. And finally, we have the Aussie Yen. And Aussie Yen, we've kind of been drifting sideways from last week. Um, you know, risk being less off. I think um, uh, I think risk on is probably gonna end up coming back into the market. You're seeing a nice, you know, nice little pin bars here. So potential for some short trades right now. Uh, Aussie, Aussie Yen. If you're looking to get short based off of risk off environment, now's pretty much the time. Or if you're looking for, you know, maybe a better price, price is just slightly up here before looking at short trades. Even here would probably be, be a lot better. Um, if you're looking at long trades, I'd probably say that's a bit of a demand zone right here. Um, and you'd be looking for price to come down into this demand zone before looking at getting uh, long. But again, risk would have to be really on, and risk on basically meaning that um, everything is sorted out with um, you know any kind of tensions um, and drama in the world, any un uncertainty, right? Because the Australian dollar will benefit from a risk on environment, and the yen benefits from a risk off environment as well as you know uh, currencies like gold um uh, swiss franc and commodities like gold etc so if you see gold start selling off um then you may want to start to look to buy the australian dollar right um so that's it for this week um hope you enjoyed the analysis if you have any questions uh, definitely post them in the comment section below don't forget to like subscribe share as well and um, until next week in the next video, take care and have a great trading week.